You relaxed? You good? I'm good. You excited? I'm excited. Cool, man. Cool. Let's do this. Hey there, Living Kinetics Wolf Pack. Raf King, back again with you for another interview. We have a very special guest on the show today. He was at a ribbon cutting. He's been at Linda's book signings. The guy's amazing. Please, my friend, introduce yourself. Tell him what you do. I'm, my name is Sky. I'm a musician. I play in many bands and I play solo guitar. Many bands. It, uh, the other day we actually got to got to kind of looking through everything, and you're a busy, busy guy, man. They, they, some people call me the busiest working, hardest working musician in Prescott, but I give that to Drew Hall. I don't know. It's a tie between me and Drew. <laughs> Ongoing competition, huh? <laughs> gotcha. A gotcha. good, in a good way. Good yeah. competition. Uh, tell them a little more about what you do. I mean, are, where, where are you playing at? Who, who are you normally playing for? What's your, what's your preferred gig? Um, the preferred gig is my favorite band, uh, the one that I've been in the longest, with Sky Daddy and the Pop Rocks. It's a rockabilly and a surf band, and that's my favorite one. Uh, lots of original tunes. Um, I'm also in a country band. I'm in a Johnny Cash tribute band. I'm in a classic rock band. I'm in a little duo with my friend Tony. Um, we play everywhere. It's easier for me to answer where we don't play because I just, I just play. I'm, I, I don't have a day job, Raph, so I'm, I just like make sure I'm busy every single night. That's awesome. And so in order to do that, I have to reinvent myself. I have to have different versions of me, and I have to just always hustle for more and more gigs. Wow, that's cool. That's, how, how do you find yourself in this, in this type of position here? Uh, how did I find myself here? Yeah, like how, 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 do you, how do you get into the music gig full time like you are? Okay, good question. Um, it's always been a dream of mine yeah. ever since I was in high school when I first started my, my, when I first picked up, when I first played with some people in a band yeah. in my high school garage band. It's always been a dream of mine, but I always thought it was not really feasible. And so I got my degree and I was teaching school and I just had music as a hobby on the side. Yeah. Well, after my divorce in 2013, I just decided to just go all in. I just wanted to do this live for a living, make it make it a living. And it was really hard at first. You know, yeah. I was on um, food stamps and all of the all the resources, everything I could just to base, barely survive. Yeah. But uh, it's like a snowball effect. After a while, people started to re recognize who I am. And I guess some enough people thought I was talented and I started getting some gigs and, and uh, it, it, it kind of went from there and I'm still barely surviving not making as much money as I have in the, in the, previous, in the past but wow. it's not about the money I really really enjoy what I'm doing and to be able to say I can make a living playing music it's just, a, it's just quite a blessing it, it is really cool to be able to, to say that yes. right and I have to say not only are you a talented guy but you're a good guy. Well, thank you. I, uh, you. I'm sure you could tell within the first few minutes of the interview, he's a nice guy. Like, he's, I don't think I've ever had a moment with you where I thought, well, this guy's a little shady. I don't know, or anything thank remotely you. close to that. So thank you, sir. I appreciate I, that. I, it's all coming from the heart. I think it's, it's all true. But I have to ask, as soon as you said that, uh, you know, you, you started this dream when you were in high school, what was the first song you learned? First song I learned? Yeah, what was the first song on guitar that you For learned? For Money. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> I, was, I was I was in college and okay. um, they needed. I was like my first year in college. I think my freshman year in college. And they and some of the my church had a wedding and they needed a guitar player to play this Restless Heart song. I guess. Um, and so I learned the song for this wedding. Uh, it was it was easy. You know, it took it was a little bit of work, but it was kind of easy. I learned it and then they gave me a check mm -hmm. for forty dollars. I'm like, really? I can get make money playing music. So that was the first song I learned to nice. you know. Uh, nice. I, I took lessons when I was, you know, when I was little. So I don't, I don't remember the first. I just went through the book and stuff. Yeah, so, we all had some tab book or something yeah. that we would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember the first real song that I learned. Other than that, that one was, you know, the gig, the wedding gig, was the first real song for money, nice. and that that's kind of started my whole thinking. Like, wow, I can make a career out of this. That's that's what's up, man. That's awesome. Have there been any um, any speed bumps along the way that you wish you had just got to skip, like? I wish I had just known that lesson before going into the music full time. Oh gosh, there's so there's way too many of them. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I guess when I'm my younger days, I played too loud. I played too many notes. Uh, I was kind of a you know I wasn't such a nice guy that you told me I was. Maybe when I was younger, <laughs> I, it just comes with experience. I don't want to play with a in a band with people that I don't like anymore. I've learned that lesson too. Tell me a little more about that band dynamic. I my, the bands that I'm in now, I make it a point to make sure that they're we're, we're compatible, not only musically but also personality-wise. Yeah. And there's been a few times where I played with some really talented players, but it just wasn't that fun, and I decided I'm not going to do that anymore. Yeah, yeah. Just just the personality friction between the two doesn't make for yeah. a viable playing session. Exactly, and, and you know musicians sometimes have egos and 
myself included. Yeah. And so sometimes it just doesn't work. Embarrassing stories at a gig. Is there is there anything that kind of like kind of funny that happened to you that you know made everyone laugh? Maybe even at yourself a little bit. Uh, yeah, about a year ago. Um, my friend Bruce Juan Meyer was playing saxophone with us. Um, it was his first gig with us. I just met him, you know, a couple weeks before that. He was doing really great. I mean, he, he came up and he sat in with us on a song or two, and I liked him a lot. And I contacted him and we played. He, he kind of sat in with the band for the whole, for the whole band for the whole set, uh -huh. uh, for the whole performance. But I kept calling him Barry, and he didn't tell me until we we're all done. He's like, by the way, my name's not Barry, it's Bruce. <laughs> Uh, last Thursday we were playing a gig over at uh, the Chaparral, and I, you know, I have this song called Rockabilly Heaven that I wrote, but I also have a song called Rockabilly Baby that I wrote, and I wanted to play rock, and I said, hey, let's do Rockabilly Heaven, all right, and then he's into it, and we're all, we finished the song, and then the drummer says, oh, Sky, I'm really sorry, I thought you, I played the wrong song, you said Rockabilly Heaven, I'm like, I did? I wanted rock, so he, had, I was like, no, I played Rockabilly Baby, and I said, that's what I wanted to play. We read each other's mind or something like. Yeah. I said I announced the wrong song and he, but he somehow knew what I wanted to play and played it. But the, that's that beautiful band intuition, right? Yeah. That 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 communication yeah. where it, you, you're somehow in the other guy's head. Exactly. That that symbiosis right there. We've been playing together for so long. I think he realized he knew that what song I wanted to play. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right about that. Are there any big musicians that you get to play with? Uh, no, not on stage with. Um, Chuck Hall was one of my childhood heroes. He's a he's a blues player from Phoenix. He's very popular in Europe. Yeah. I mean, he's like legendary status in Europe. But um, but I, I was gaga for him the first time I saw him play at the blues festival down in Phoenix when I was uh, in high school. Yeah. Um, and so he moved up to Prescott a little while ago and uh, kind of got to know him there and we've, we've, uh, we've done some shows together and that's always an honor and a that's... privilege. I get nervous because he's so good. <laughs> that's the only time I get nervous is when there's somebody in the audience or if it's on the stage with me, it's even worse. You know, I just get nervous because he's so good. Yeah. yeah messed up a little bit more or, or could, do you kind of make your way through it I make my way through it and, and it actually brings out the best to both of us I think we, nice. we kind of feed off each other and, and it's, a, it's a healthy competition it's not a competition music is not a competition at all so I don't mean it that way but it's more like you know wow that was good see if I let's see if I can match that you know yeah yeah well I mean it is kind of like a dance of the skills yes. when, when it comes to music and yeah, yeah it's not it's not running up it's 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 bringing out the best of each other yeah yeah how, how does writing a song come together for you it's different for every song. Uh -huh. um, there's not really a formula, but uh, and I, I'll say this many times, most of the time, when I get an idea for a song, and then what I think it's going to end up being, and then what it ends up being is completely different. Um, yeah. So it ends up taking different forms, and um, uh, sometimes it takes. One one time, a, a song took five minutes to write. I was uh -huh. just writing it down the words, and music came to me, and it was done. Yeah. Uh, other times, it takes years, literally years. I write the first part, and I know there needs to be more, and then. Four years later, I might finally end up writing the. Sometimes the words come first. Sometimes the music comes first. So there's really not a formula, yeah. but uh, it all kind of like comes together in the end. And then Eventually. the end product. I know when it's done. When yeah. the end product is there, it's like that's the song. So you don't normally have the issue of not being able to leave it alone. Like you get to a point where it's done, but then I want to tweak it. Just I, I bet I could add like a solo in there or something, right? You you don't normally have that not, problem. Not intentionally, okay. um, but the songs do evolve. Gotcha. Just because I keep playing them and I and I and I get bored with them and I try to add new parts to them and make it a little bit different. Absolutely, they do evolve. Absolutely. They end up evolving. The tempos change a lot too. I write a song and then I go back and listen to when I wrote it, and it's like, wow, we used to do it that slow. Like it's sped up a lot, uh -huh. little by little. Gradually, you don't even realize it until you go back and listen to the, to the song. And there's like 20, 30 beat difference. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Do you play faster live? Is it is I it tend adrenaline? To. Yeah. It's the adrenaline. It's exactly right. Yeah, exactly. I get excited. I love playing live. I yeah. love I love the audience. I love an attentive audience. And sometimes my drummer has to keep reminding me. All right, one, two, three, six. Guys, slow down. Slow, calm down. <laughs> Let me start this one. Okay. <laughs> I'll count you in, buddy. <laughs> right. Let me ask you this though, just just based off the comment of, you know, sometimes it could take years to write a song. Um, I think it was Bob Seger. Who, who mentioned in an interview that he can't he can't not finish a song like even if it's a bad song like he knows irrevocably it's a bad song he still has to finish it yeah. he still has to be able to put that last note on it and then never play it again really? right That's very interesting so do you do you find yourself in that scenario no, or no never okay. in fact I probably have about 200 songs that are or song ideas that haven't been written yet so just I don't that and that doesn't bother me okay that doesn't gotcha. bother me at all 
how do you find yourself getting to that place of siphoning and, and, and using those ideas? Is, is there... Sometimes I wait for the inspiration. Yeah. Sometimes I just say, hey, this is a good song. This is going to be a good song. I just need to get on with it. And I just force it out. Anything that helps you in that, in that creative process to, to force it out? Yeah. Um, as hard as it is for me to turn off the music, you know what I mean? Um, I'm always making sure there's music around me when I'm yeah. driving and I'm home. It's like, it's too quiet. I got to turn on music. If I just turn off the music for a while, maybe a day or two of just no music, um, it helps. Walking around the square. Yeah. Um, just, just walking. There's where there's not the distractions of, you know, there's, there's nature distractions, you know, yeah. which is good distractions. There's not the phone or the, you know, the TV or the music or anything like that distracting me. I just walk around the, in the square. I've written some really good songs. Just walking in circles around this court. That's right here. That's amazing. That's amazing. And hey everyone, um, before I let you go, make sure you check out some of his music. We got something from just a couple of Saturdays ago here. Uh, check it out. It's, it's really recent, so that gives you a little profile on him. And But make sure you check out all of his other music. Where can they find it at? Skydaddy.net. Skydaddy.net. Yes, dot com was already taken. Gotcha. So I got to get Oh, there's also 99yearsband.com. That's my Johnny Cash tribute band. Excellent. Can they, can they find you on Facebook? Can they contact Excellent. you? Oh, yeah. Sky Conwell. C-O-N-W-E-L-L. Very cool. Very cool. Is there anything that you want to add in the interview? No, I appreciated the opportunity. I appreciate talking to you. It's a lot of fun. I thank you for what, everything you do. Right? Absolutely. Thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with me today. Thanks very much.
me. 